and my table kind of crazy. What it is, what it is, we live. I believe us to be live. What it is, what it is, it's been a minute. Spliff Talk is back. Hold on, my table is acting funny. Get it together, table. Oh, get it together. Don't do that to me. We live. May take a time for some people to come in the buildings because it's been a minute. It's been a long minute. Hold on, let me. That's right. It's been a minute since I've been in the building. Do you know how to fight? That's what we're going to talk about. We got to start talking about it. It's too many snake oil salesmen out there, people. Trying to sell you a fantasy of fighting. I'm prepared to challenge anybody on this topic. I got to learn how to um, let people on to this live so we can do some verbal debate, martial debate about this topic. Salute. Smash that like button as you come in here. Burly up in here. I'm going to let it cook for a little while because I ain't been at it for a minute. I'm going to let it cook. I'm going to let y'all cook. Come in the building as y'all get to notice. Smash that like button as you get in here. Burley's in the building. Guns is out. Taking all questions, all doubters. We talking about it. Do you know how to fight? Most men don't. Most men don't know how to fight. And then you got a lot of these other men out here trying to teach people how to fight with these strange concepts and notions. So we're going to get to the heart of this. We're going to it's going to stop now. It's going to stop right now. We're going to be bringing on guests. I got some guests lined up. Mr. Roberto Sharp. Yeah, we're going to have peoples on here. Mr. Wilson Pitts. I'm going to get some Lewis Minder. I know some peoples, y'all. I've been getting around. I know some peoples now. Yes, sir. Salute, salute. Who with me? Give me a thumbs up if you with me. Throw a comment up if you with me. We're going to let it rock for a minute because it's been, it's been a minute since I've been on the live. So I'm just going to let the time burn a little something. Hopefully my computer don't, don't die on me. Anybody see them fights? Anybody see that Javante Davis fight? Real. Mr. Real at will. Yo, yo, yo. Who seen that Devontae Davis fight against Mario Barrios? Did Devontae prove his greatness or what? Did he? I think he did. I think he did. He was losing that fight. There was some worry in it, and he had to reach deep down the side. See, it ain't the fights that you just streamline over where you reach your greatness. It's those fights that push you, and I think that was the fight for uh, Tank right there. Salute, salute. Pardon the background. There's some work being done. It's going to get fixed up. Well, you know how we are. We from the dungeon. Salute. Real at will. Salute. That's right. It was. He tested. He was tested. His greatness was tested. The armor was tested. And to come to find out that the armor is real. Javante Tank Davis is a real live beast. Real live wire. That's right. We got Spliff Talk in the building. I'm going to give it up to about like the 10 minute mark before I start going on my rant. Because I need some people to come in the building. Like, sub, share. You know, the, you, you know the drill. Like, sub, share. Smash the like button. Share the video for everybody who's coming in. Now, when I was doing this before, I had it on the roll a little something. But I fell back to do the reaction videos. 
Does he use 52? I would say yes. 52 is a study of defense. And Javante's Tank Davis defense was on display. It was on display. It was on straight full display that night. Full display. Vincent Garzon, salute. Welcome. Welcome. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Step up right up in the building. The doors is open. It's a revolving door. Just walk in. Ain't no locks. Just walk in the building. You know what I'm saying? We about to chew it. We about to chew the fat. We about to chew the fat and all that. Like I said, I've been doing the reaction videos. Salute to all the people who support the reaction videos, making the channel grow. You know, that's big stuff. I wish I could, you know, I'm not a motorcycle rider, but I love motorcycles. <laughs> when they start making every motorcycle automatic, I might be able to do something because I'm very terrible with the gear switching thing, but um, I'm eventually going to learn. But that was my man's Harley. I had to take a picture on it. I wanted that skull and bones on the Harley. Skull and bones pose on the Harley. Never been done before. Never been done. Who rocking with me? Who in the building? Okay. We coming in the building. Burley live. It's live in here. Me? 47. 47 years old. That's right. 13 years more to 60. It's serious business. When you 47, you got 13 years. 460. You know, the, the race has begun. You in the ninth inning. I'm in the ninth inning, y'all. That's why I got to spread the word. That's why I got to drop the information. My teachers say before you leave this earth. 18. Oh, Lord. You just started, Mr. Vincent. You just started. Salute to you. You just got on the path to life, man. I'm living through you, man. You got to do big things, man. Got to do big things, man. Don't don't waste this. Don't waste this life, man. It's easy. It's easy to waste. It's easy. I'm telling you, it's so easy to waste. You'll wake up and be 50. <laughs> Look back and like, what did you do? That's why right now, Mr. Vincent, you got the chance to do it all. And that's what you're supposed to do. Ball to you fall. Balls to the wall. Pause. <laughs> All right, we about to reach in that 10 minute mark. You know, we're going to start jumping in. You know, I was having a conversation with a brother and he was telling me that he trains self defense. And it's different from boxing and other and, and, and kicking and stuff because it's about trying to make it home. And this is what we got to take a look at. This is snake oil salesman talk, people. He said, I don't curse at all. That's right. Stay on that. Stay on that. But um, this is the problem. This is the confusion, people. Because a punch is a punch. If you go to your boxing gym and you learn how to throw a correct punch, a correct punch, turning your fist over, ducking your chin as you throw the punch, and you get into it and you leave the gym and somebody tries to rob you and you duck your chin and throw that punch, that punch will save your life. It is no different from another scenario of or, or building another scenario saying that that punch won't do it. You need an extra additive to it. There is no extra additive to it. You know, you hear these things about, you know, God uh, 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 ripping eyeballs out pulling tongues out. These are things that you can't train. Pardon me. These are things that you can't train. You can't be training to rip eyeballs out. How do you train to rip eyeballs out? Were well, you going to get a, a dummy with detachable eyeballs? See, some of these things that they try to sell you, this is this that'll come natural in the fight. What you need are the three basic food groups of fighting. Three basic food groups. 
punching, kicking, and wrestling. And you must learn these things because as men, we have been we have been led to believe that just because you got a little aggression and vinegar, you prepare for the fight. No, you are not. Fighting is a mechanic, y'all. It's a mechanic that you have. There's a coordination. I've been looking at these videos, doing reactions, and the coordination for fighting out there is terrible. Like they're doing nothing. It's like there's no training at all. Like even when you watch the National Geographic uh, 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 things and you see the baby lions, they young, they rolling down the hill going at each other. You'll hear the narrator say, this is play. But this play is very vital for what they're going to need when they're bringing down real beasts when they're grown-ups. So it's play, but it's practice. And it's almost like this new generation has no practice. Like they have no practice. They're no longer, like when I was coming up, we had slap boxing. We had test of men. You know, when you're throwing punches at each other, you know, sometimes it got real. You, had, you know, it, it did what it did. But you got it off and you learn from it. But I can see now that these new younger guys, they have nothing to offer. It's almost nothing to offer. It is terrible out there. It's terrible. And the belief that you know how to fight just because you can put your hand head down and helicopter swing is terrible. And the snake oil salesman selling you this. No, don't. That's just boxing. This is sport. I'm going to teach you something to really get home. What are you going to teach you? What are you going to teach you? You really want to get home? Get a gun. But then make sure the gun laws in your state fit you carrying the gun. <laughs> I'm not promoting anybody to go out there and grab a gun. Hold on, people. Let me readjust my setup here. Oh, hold on one second. Hold on. Stand back up. Oh, hold on. Oh. Alrighty. Oh, the people. All right, there we go. Yeah, battery getting low. I don't want this to go out when I'm on my on my rant right here. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, hold on. All right, hold on. Let me get this camera together. It's acting like it ain't got no legs. This camera acting like it got baby calf legs, like somebody that knocked it out or something. All righty. Pardon the interruption, people. But I want to make sure I get this message out here because I'm sick and tired of all these people selling fantasies and telling us that there is a, a self-defense mechanism or something that you can learn that's going to get you home safely. Where to get you home safely is repetitive training, muscle memory. See, when the muscle has memory, the coordination of fighting will save you. It'll come to you when you, it's like a genie. Cause see, when the muscle don't forget, like you got people that have dementia and they can forget the people around them, but they're not forgetting how to put on their pants. They're not forgetting how to, you know, put their shirts on and stuff because this is a muscle memory. See, the muscle has a very deep memory when trained. So when you train in muscle memory and then you get into a fight and he come at you, bang, you just snap out and you'll be like, and the next thing you know, he sleeps, sleep. And you like, yo, what happened? It just yeah, it's almost like, yeah, your hand found his face without you thinking about it. And that's what you need in a street fight. You need the calm of actual practice to do something. Because the brother I was talking about, he said, oh, I don't need sparring. You don't need sparring. How are you fighting without sparring? See, this is the problem. And it's not just Kung Fu. It's even in some of these karate things and these karate fighters and you know, not all karate fighters, because a lot of karate fighters I know can actually, you know, really put some work in. Smash that like button. We got 22 people in here. Only eight likes. Come on. Come on. Roll with your brother, Burley. Help a brother out. 
smash that like button get the likes up the likes help get the video out smash that like button come on we can get as many likes as people in the building because i know y'all watch kevin samuels there's a new kevin samuels in town there's a new sheriff in town and i'm talking about these dudes that be acting like they know how to fight and they and they messing it up in the martial art community and i've had it up to here people i've had it up to here <laughs> I've had it up to here and I'm having these conversation with the, I don't even want to disrespect. So, cause I, 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 I'm a cancer, you know, I got a little petty label in me so I can easily get, get into dis disrespect, but because I'm 13 years away from 60, <laughs> my race is almost, almost finished. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to start disrespecting, but it must stop because our young warriors are the ones that are paying the price. They out here doing this. They out here doing this. They ain't even looking. You know, the, the, the scientific way of ducking your head when you punch, it's right there. So you get off the same, you get off what your brain needs, which is um defense and offense. See, the reason why you do this is because you don't you don't you don't want to get hit in your face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you put the head down and you start helicopter swinging because you don't want to get hit in the face. But there's a scientific way to handle that, that you can do that better. You you know, you you drop your face every time you punch. And what do you get? You get a cover. You get a cover. You know, it's almost like your shoulder should be slapping you in your face. But you need people teaching these things so these young warriors can stop all of this. They out there going to these places that's telling them, I'm going to teach you survival tactics to get home. And unless they passing you, unless they passing you the Draco with the hundred shot clip, I'm confused. You know, what other ways are bigger than punching, kicking and wrestling the basic food groups before you start doing any type of Kung Fu? You need to be you need to have understood the basic food groups of fighting, punching, kicking and wrestling. And there's another group. But it's it's apart from that group. This is the group with 52 block shines. Defense. If you up there wanting to punch a man in the face, you got to understand he want to punch you in your face too. See, a lot of us, we fight from a, you've been sold these fake martial arts. So you fight from a place of that you just going to walk in the building and start kicking ass and taking names. And ain't nobody going to hit you back. See, this is the craziness. This is the craziness. I'm a cancer too. <laughs> yeah, cancer's in the building. You know what I'm saying? See, but I was as I was saying, this is the craziness. Even the bad guy wanted to go home. Even the bad guy that got the gun up your back, unclicking your chain from the back. Even he wanna go home. He wanna go home with your chain. He wanna go home with your belongings. So you're not the only one thinking about going home. You want to go home, and the bad guy's gonna go home. And you can think of all of these grab them by the throat, grab the nuts. And that, listen, listen, in real time, do you really think you got that type of accuracy to maybe have some Denmark poison fingers where you hitting them? And he's like, oh, 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 I'm turning off. It's not going to work, man. It's not going to work. A good punch to the liver, man, will bring a man down, will bring surely bring a man down. You don't even need all of that high tech. You slip in, put the ah right to the liver. Watch him go down like a sack of potatoes. Then you can talk to him. You know what I'm saying? If you want to call police on him, he's still going to be laying there. That liver shot is serious. Take your feet from under you. So you can't act like you, you know how to fight. You can't think aggression is the way of fighting. Aggression is not the way of fighting. Getting mad, getting mad don't do nothing. Matter of fact, Rocky Marciano said it. He said the first person to get mad loses. First person to get mad loses. So what that mean? You got to learn how to fight a fight. Calm under pressure. See, are they telling you that? This is why you have to spar too. I don't even know why people talking about they ready to fight and they not sparring. Because sparring handles the part of you that drills, hitting the bag, running, and all of that other good stuff just can't scratch. And it's being under pressure mentally and emotionally when you got a man in front of you trying to X you out. That's why you spar. 
because under sparring you get the necessary control of the chemical reaction that happens to you when it's time to fight adrenaline in your bloodstream a dopamine's cutting off uh nerve centers you can't just you can't just do that ain't no drill ain't no technique anybody can give you that can handle that ain't no technique and anybody who's telling you telling you that is lying to you they capping they got caps on they got all types of caps on they got the baseball cap they got the fitted cap they got the snap back cap they got the cap with the neck they capping man i'm telling you i'm here to expose them they capping that's right real life well they ain't been in too many fights they capping you have to go get fight coordination people what i said three bodies of fighting punching kicking wrestling those three cover everything mma covers all three that's why it's mma mma covers all three punching kicking wrestling with the wrestling you got jujitsu which in punching you got elbows within kicking you have knees see the major the major groups break down into the lower groups from punching being the major group what is the lower group under where is the subgroup of punching said elbows if you got kicking what is the subgroup of kicking your knees if you got wrestling where's the sub version of, of wrestling you have jujitsu you got judo so the three major body groups cover everything and you can either master all three which is not even master but train in all three see because the thing with mixed martial arts is you run into the jack of all trades master of none this is correct then you have those that master the one like boxers have mastered the hands real good wrestlers the ground real good kickers kicking but the variables in the street fight are so large that you have to be a mixed martial artist if you're talking about street fighting with the knuckle draggers if you're talking about ending up on the right side of a world star uh hip-hop video you talking about you're gonna have to know all three straight like that because you can be good with the hands and somebody pick you up drop you on your head you can be good with wrestling run in and get your head kicked off like a soccer ball go that could be you so if you're gonna be with the knuckle draggers uncle light suggests uncle light suggests that you do all three you don't play around you put all three under your belt because this is what you're going to need because like i said the variables are so large and even then knowing all those three may not help you because what if they got a weapon you know you got to run into weapons there's a whole another thing to fight in fighting is just unsafe all points what you really want to do is get off and get away that's really what you want to do in the fight is get off and get away you ain't going to stick around raising your hands like you the champion that's not a street fight no you need to get off and get away if i can catch you sleeping and hit you with the left hook bong 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 and get up out of there i'm gonna do it what's my defense for it's if you just come at me with wild blows i got my blocks on uh, come up bang get you up out of there and go your thing should be deliver and go you should be like the ups postal service you should deliver and go ain't no sticking around for that you know if you're really talking about the real thing and there's no technique special technique that can save you not a special technique a coordination a muscle memory from practice you heard all right my rant is over let me read some of these questions who with me fight to go not fight to ko and, and get them a medal if they get ko that's just a double bonus i guess facts 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 you know we ain't fighting for belts if you in them streets ain't no belt the only belt they may give you is when they strapping you in the ambulance that belt that go over you so you don't swallow your tongue because who knows you they may have hit you and made you crack your cranium them street fights is real y'all you gotta you you know you can't play around in them street fights with kung fu fantasies or martial art fantasies you know if you learn the boxing you should be learning the boxing don't be trying to go once a week 
hitting the pads, hitting the bag, and then you out there telling people you know how to box. You know, because the truth is going to come through the training. That's where the truth is at. The truth ain't in the technique. Truth ain't in the technique. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to start bringing people on here because I want to see the people that disagree with me. Because I just was going going back and forth with a guy, and he told me I ain't know what I was talking about. <laughs> he said, I ain't know what I was talking about. You know, and that's another thing. People talk about sparring. Listen, sparring don't have to be 100% to get off. Like, if you can't do it slow, you can't do it fast. It's like driving. If you've never driven before and you just got your license and you just started driving, you you ain't you ain't shooting up to 100 if you never did it before. You got to go through 10, 0, 5, 10, 20. You got to get comfortable with the lower numbers before you get to the fast num numbers. You know, you can't just do that. Same thing with sparring. It ain't about sparring 100 percent with y'all killing each other. Y'all supposed to start off, start off touching, you know. And if anybody knows anything about sparring, sparring is a is a momentum type of thing. It picks up speed by itself. So if you start your sparring match off at 100, by the end of the third round, y'all going to be shooting at each other. <laughs> the fight is going to have elevated. Y'all going to have took the gloves off, went home, got the Draco, and, 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 and be busting shots at each other. You can't start off at 100. Where, where, where you going to go, 1,000? No. You got to start off at zero. Let it build by itself because emotion is real. You kept we sparring. You touch me nicely. I'm coming back. Hey, hey. Next thing you know, hey, hey. Next thing you know, hey, 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 hey. Now we had a hundred miles because emotion, baby. You can't. You know, we we emotion. You know, it's emotion, baby. Emotion going to come in there. We ain't robots. It's just like when you go to court and they tell the jury to act like they ain't hear something. <laughs> strike it from your, strike that from your record. You can't strike it from your record. You heard it. And any good seasoned lawyer knows that. We're not robots. You can't just delete. No, it's still there. You can't just strike it from your records. So when you sparring and your emotion is there, emotion is already built in. We men, it's competitive. You catch me with a good shot. I'm trying to catch you. Did not catch you. You trying to catch me. And next thing you know, we the pace them picked up. But you got to let the pace grow, you know, because sparring is still a place of training, using your weapons under pressure, not killing each other. You're not supposed to be killing each other in sparring. You know, Ali, who got Parkinson, took most of his damage in sparring. Most of his damage. That kicked in that Parkinson was in sparring, having gym wars. Gym wars. Yeah. 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 Gym wars. Then you get older and you hear. You got to love yourself, man. See, the thing with fighting is the problem with fighting is if you get so caught up in trying to kill somebody else, you're probably a sociopath. You're a psycho. <laughs> you're supposed to fight loving yourself, man. It ain't about him. It ain't about your op in front of you. It's about you. You kill your op because you love yourself so much. You don't kill your op just because you're a killer. That's not the way to do it. I'm just sorry. That's just not the way to do it. You learned the wrong. Someone's going to chop your head off. That's not the way to do it. You win because you love yourself so much that he's in the way. That's how you get good victories. Those are good victories. Those are the victories when you lay your head on the pillow at night, you can sleep. Bobbing and weaving. Facts. If you ain't bobbing and weaving, you ain't ready to, you know, you, but you know what bobbing and weaving is? That's a love of self. See, when I'm doing this, I'm really saying I love myself. I love me. I don't know about you, but I love me. So when you like this and you walk into me like a robot and I'm here, I can obviously see that you don't love yourself. You don't love yourself. And I'm finna make you pay for that. Because if you ain't bobbing and weaving and trying to move offline, block, that's all of the stuff you see in 52. You know, a 52 man, you know why he fighting like this? Because he loves himself. What flavor I'm toting on? Um, um, I do believe this is Christmas Christmas tree. I believe I got a little Christmas tree right here. 
You know what I'm saying? I got a nice little canister of. I went to Cali. My homie blessed me. You know, salute to those people in Cali. I was out there in Iron Attic with C.T. Fletcher, Mike Rashid, Indigo. I was out there with the big boys. That's right, your boy Burley. Get around. The Exile. What it is, pimping? How are you? I'm back. I'm back in the game. I'm back in the game. He said, why do most street guys and girls think most fights should be a boxing match and no grappling the kicks? That's true. Because even when I came up in the projects, they didn't they they said they used to say Sigma Black, they used to say kicking was for girls back in my day. And um obviously that's crazy, you know, because I know a lot of girls that don't even know how to kick right. So I don't even know how they came up with that. But you know, it's biased stuff that led to uh, you know, uh uh some fighters not getting they getting they full hit so um yeah I, I don't know what's up with the concept behind um uh kicking and wrestling is something wrong like most men don't like wrestling because just the training of wrestling you got to have a man on you and they be thinking that's something gay You know, they were like, I ain't going to have a man in between my legs. I get it. See, but those men, those men got some. I, I don't know what's wrong with them. Listen here. If you if you know you like women, you can train how to fight. Men have been doing this for hundreds of years, you know, and um, Nelson Clint, he said, I know how to fight. Salute. He said, you got to hate to lose more than you love to win. Mm. Yeah, but um, like I said, like so, you know, it is what it is. But kicking and wrestling is not a girl thing, and it's not. It's something you should pick up. If, like I said, if you're gonna be in the streets, you should pick this up. You know what I'm saying? Somebody pick you up, slam you on your head, and if you don't know how to sprawl or or, or neutralize that, you're gonna be you're gonna be on your neck. You're gonna be on your neck. That's why I said I'm going to be bringing on my teachers, Mr. Roberto Shaw. This platform is about to grow. I'm going to be doing some interviews. I'm going to become interview, Mr. Interview Burla, interview Burley. You know, I'm put out some interviews, interview some martial artists, get their take on this because we got to break down. We got to break down this phenomenon because you would believe with MMA that a lot of the uh martial art fantasy should be wiped up but they haven't still a lot of martial art fantasies out there and um they don't do justice to the people that's really learning how to fight so it's time to get on this and then it's time to, for our men to start learning how to fight you know as men you got to practice you know ain't no more um i get mad so i know how to fight or i can get upset so i know how to fight that ain't enough He said, I once knew a white teen in school was taking down the top street fighters in the school, had them salty. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because rest, listen, when you think about all of the all of the major food groups of fighting, punching, kicking and wrestling, wrestling is by far the dangerous and easier to get off. Because by the numbers, to put a kick or punch on someone that's moving towards you, you know, your accuracy rate got to be up there. You know, you can miss a lot, but with grappling, you know, that's kind of, it's easier to get into that range and really do some damage. Um, Rogo 92, so I played Tekken, so I know how to fight. <laughs> Thanks for the good laugh, buddy. <laughs> but you're going to have to step that up. Uh, Frankie Small says, salute, big dog. Keep doing your thing with these comical videos, and I'm out. Thank you, Frankie Small. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. That's what we're here to do. You know, we're here to talk and have fun at the same time. To beat your opponent in any fight is to hate that opponent. Keeps me winning. Okay, okay, Maurice Brown. I'm all right. Oh, James Rich Richardson dropping five dollars on your boy. He get a triangle trade. He get a triangle trade, Mr. James Richardson, for that five dollars in the super chat. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We here for you. I'm here for the people. You know what I'm saying? 
I do it for the I do it for the I do it for the people, not for the ground. Thank you. Like I said, I'm be bringing some peoples on here. We're going to get some interviews with some real martial artists and we're going to talk about, you know, what can be done and what can't be done. He said he destroyed a lot of prideful gang members in that school. That's right. You know, pride can make you die. See, when, the good thing about training is training to take away the poison of pride. Pride can be a good thing. You know, there's, there's measures, there, there's levels to it. Like, you know, pride, there's levels to pride. You know, you can't just be out there proud for no reason. You know what I'm saying? I can't, you know, I can't be, pr I can't be proud, be proud to be rich and be poor. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got a poor mentality, how are you proud to be rich? And there's a lot of people doing that. And that's why they end up broke. Just like the man who came into the lottery. He won the lottery. He got 30,000. He took 20 of said 30 and bought a chain. He went to a gas station and got robbed for said chain. So meaning he's down to 10. Now, 10 is still a win, though. 10, 10 is still a come up. But that's that mentality of trying to be rich when you're poor. You know, when you're poor, you play poor. When you're rich, you be rich. If you don't know how to fight, you learn how to fight. You don't act like you know how to fight. But this is the problem with emotions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. James Robinson. Richardson. I said Robinson. Where is James Robinson coming? James Richardson. Salute, sir. You like the last video with the grappler? Thank you. Yeah, I works with grapplers. You know, when I went to when 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 I went to Denmark, you know, my peoples was out there. I was showing, I was showing Magic Burley some of the Paqua moves and the grappling moves that can be used, man. Listen, you got to know how to grapple people. You are Marsh. That's right. Martial arts in the building. All my true martial arts. Where you at? Where you at? You know what I'm saying? Not these fake martial arts. You know, even some of these knife guys, man, I'm telling you, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm really, some of these knife guys, man, they pushing it. They really pushing it. Ain't no tink, 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 tink. You ain't going to be out there tink, tink, tinking. Now, you know what you need to know with a good knife, where to cut. It's like a butcher. Imagine if you had to fight a butcher. A butcher and you come in there with your 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 knife your your knife technique against a butcher. I bet that butcher fillet you. <laughs> I bet that butcher fillet you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Uh, what's that boy Infinity? He says, "Stay rich in spirit, rich in wisdom." Thank you. That is my goal. I told you, I'm going to be 47. My birthday is coming up. I'm a cancer. When I mean, you know it's cancers, we got a lot of pet, we got a little petty label in this. Look at 50 Cent. It's a lot of petty label in cancers. Uh 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 um your boy uh that just came home, he's a cancer, uh Bill Cosby. But that don't mean all cancers is putting Quaylu in these women. You know what I'm saying? I don't promote Quaylus, but also what they don't tell you is at that time when Bill Cosby was out there quaaluding. Quaaludes were big at that time. You had women that had already popped three Quaaludes before they seen you. So don't follow. <laughs> he said the butcher would flay me and sell me on the street corner. <laughs> you know. Straight like that. Yeah. Us cancers got a little petty little bell. But what I was saying is my birthday is coming and I'm 13 years away from 60. So I'm in my ninth inning, y'all. I'm in the ninth inning. I'm in the ninth inning. Is that what Spanish Fly was? Jake has it. No, Spanish Fly was, um, you could buy that at the store. They used to have that in the stores. I really don't know what was in Spanish Fly. I never trusted it. I never used Spanish Fly, but I knew some of my Spanish friends, and not just because they were Spanish, they was using Spanish Fly. No pun intended. It was just some of my Puerto Rican friends were way more daring than me to do the job. Is there anybody doing 52 blocks in Puerto Rico? No, there should be. There should be. There will be. You know, I got a management team. Um, I don't know if anybody checked out the Fast and Furious 9, the new installment. There's a fight scene. There's a 52 block fight scene in there. Let's all salute Mr. Ludacris for getting the job done, for bringing 52 to the block scene. And my homie Diallo Frazier, 
who's teaching them and schooling Mr. Ludacris in the art of 52 block. Let's salute those men for bringing it to the silver screen because they did that. They did that. He said, Tech Lass, I just stick with these greens. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. Mean greens, nothing in between. I just do the greens, nothing in between. I just do the greens with nothing in between. Who y'all got on the fight? Tyson Fury, Deontay. If you got Deontay, press one. Anybody see Deontay winning, press one. Anybody see Tyson Fury winning, press two. Who y'all got? Who y'all got? Now, I'm going to tell you, I love Deontay. Uh-oh, Jake has it. Press two. Somebody press two. Tyson Fury. We got one for Tyson Fury. Where y'all at? Where y'all at? Oh, Sigma Black, two. Oh, Maurice Brown, two. Two. Oh, my God. The twos are coming in the building. We got Tyson Fury fans in the building. And I ain't mad at y'all. I ain't mad at y'all. This affinity got one. I ain't mad, y'all. Tyson Fury been doing this since he was nine. Let me tell you something about Deontay Wilder, though. Let me tell. Let, let's get this out the way, folks. Y'all remember the story, the Cinderella Man, right? James Braddock. That's right. There's a new Cinderella Man on the block, and his name is Deontay Wilder. Let's talk about this. Deontay Wilder got into the boxing game because his daughter had a bone disease or something, and he needed to come up, and he became the hardest hitter ever known the boxing not only did he get the, the money for the the operation he's a hall of famer we talking about if this man don't get a movie i'm going i'm listen if this man don't get a movie there's a the, the, the fix is in he is the real cinderella man but now let's get back to why tyson fury is who he is tyson fury been doing this since he was yay high his father was a a, a, a bare knuckle champion He's been fighting all his life. Muscle memory, as I said before, is serious. He's he been getting that muscle memory since nine. That's a steep hill to climb. You know? Yeah, Deontay got the power. He always got the power. But that's a steep hill to climb. That's a steep. Tyson Fury was born to fight. The man is a fight genius. This is a steep hill to climb for Deontay. That's why, you know, I, I, I've heard... Uh, Laurie James, James with Tyson Fury. Chi. Listen, in the in the sport of boxing, if you go back to uh, uh, the fight between the Manassas Mola and George Carpenter, he got punched in his nuts four times. Four times, my nigga, my homie Dempsey the Mola mauled his nut sacks for four 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 shots. You can see it on camera. Then knocked him out. And when Carpenter went, you know what they told him: protect yourself at all times, young man. So, yeah, there's going to be some cheating in there. Could be. Could be. But you got to work around that. You got to work around that. Now, it's up to Deontay to prove that. But what I'm not going to go with with Deontay is that Mark Breland poisoned his water. I'm sorry. I'm not going with that. When I was going for my coach's license in Gleason's gym, Mark Breland was there. That man is a saint. You can feel good energy. I, I, I'm not going with Mark Breland poisoned his water. Sorry. Not doing that. Yeah, Tyson could have had an egg weight in his hands. He could have pulled his hands down and been slapping them. There was a fighter called Slappy Maxi. Look him up. He became a champion by hitting people with slapping punches. It happens. I get it. There's all types of cheating in boxing. There used to be healing where you could take the laces and rub them down your opponent's face and turn his face to leather. So I'm not saying that cheating ain't happening all the cheating is possible but what i'm not going with is mark breland poisoned his water sorry not going to happen i met the man that man is a saint i'm not believing mark brilliant is out there poisoning water just not going to take it just not going to take it you could have got that water bottle took it sent it to the lab for forensics test we got forensics out here man forensics we would have found that chemical that was in the water. And what chemical was it? What chemical is going to take the fight out of you? I'll wait. Press one if you know of a chemical that takes the fight out of you. Press one, please. Press one if you know of a chemical that takes the fight out of you. Please press one. Then name the chemical. Then name this foreign agent.
Jake has it. You press one. Tell me that chemical. What is the chemical that can take the life out of you that you can put in the water? <laughs> Fentanyl. <laughs> fentanyl chlorophyll chloro nah that we we talk about that's going to knock you out <laughs> you ain't going to be able to fight that fight you ain't and 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 and, and you put it in water they're going to taste it you hand me a water full of chlorophyll mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. what's this this ain't gatorade he gonna know that immediately 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 nah man we got to come better we got to come better no ain't nothing out there that's just going to zap your energy and keep you in the fight and have you fighting deontay wasn't out there not fighting he did he wasn't out there like a, like a uh he was sluggish he was fighting he took them shots and then he started getting sluggish when when tyson fury started because tyson fury was a big man tyson fury's talking about going to 300 pounds man when a big man is hitting you, that's serious business. That's why it's the heavyweight division. What makes the heavyweight division so dangerous? After 200, there is no weight cap. You, If you can come in that joint 400 pounds, if you can move around, that's a chlorophyll for you. Let a 400-pound man hit you. Is uh, sumo wrestling a viable base for street fighting? Yes. I mean, you can learn, you can definitely get something from sumo wrestling that can work in a street fight. Why? Because most people don't know their range. Most people don't know how to fight and keep their range. So they're going to run in and it's going to be a chest to chest fight anyway. So yeah, sumo wrestling can help. <laughs> he said it was over when he licked his blood. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. You know, Tyson was out there licking blood. We got COVID out there. We got AIDS. We got, you know, listen. Tyson, when when a man licked your blood, he just stole your soul. Yeah, I mean, like like I said, slapping and boxing can happen. There's some slappy maxi going on out there. You can be slapped with a forearm. If you look at some of Deontay's fights, he knocked out some of his people. I think he knocked out Luis Ortiz with a forearm. That first shot wasn't even a punch. It was his forearm. <laughs> God Black said you can pay, you can learn something from a crackhead as long as you paying attention. Fact, I've seen some crackhead fights that was serious. Listen, 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 man, listen. I'm going to go back to one of my old days. I was down south. This crackhead ran off with our cracks. We knew where he lived. We went to the crib. Now, statue of limitations is up so I could tell his story. So we went to his crib. We had the uh, homie go in the crib, leave the crib door open. We rush up in the crib. We looking for him. I'm up there kicking over tables. We knocking stuff down. We going through the closet. I can't find him. Before we about to leave, I see a shower curtain shaking. shaking. I say, oh, he in the bathroom. As soon as I grabbed the shower curtain, he said, no, cuz, hold on, cuz. I moved the shower curtain. He was up in there. Not only did he take the, not only did he take all our cracks, he had smoked them. I seen it all in his eyes. His jaw, his, his jaw was moving fast, so I knew he had smoked all of our cracks. I grabbed the mirror off the wall. I hit him in the head with it. He went down to one knee, came back up, said, "Yo, cuz, hold on, cuz." I, <laughs> I cracked him again. Yeah, I gave him that. I gave him that big wahoo crack. He went down to one knee again. Paul came back. Hold on, cuz. Listen. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something about a crackhead. Let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something about a crackhead. The, listen, listen. They are almost like the juggernaut. <laughs> Once they get a good hit of that crack, they, they turn into the juggernaut. They no no living force on this planet can hurt a crackhead when they high. Press one. <laughs> Press one. If you with me, no crackhead can be hurt when they high. Press one. You want to talk about story? <laughs> you want to talk about stories about crackheads? I got stories for days. I got stories for days. This can go on. I got stories for days. Crackheads are amazing people. Let me tell you something. Crackheads then put crackheads then put most men in benzes. A crackhead to work all day. I'm gonna tell you like this: If you got a business and you got lazy workers, snip. 
slip some crack in their sandwich. Put a little piece of crack rock in they in they sandwich on lunch break and see if they don't work their asses off. <laughs> you you want to improve pro productivity at your company? Slip a little piece of crack in they little ham sandwich. Put a little crack in they coleslaw. Watch what happens. They're gonna be working for no reason. They ain't gonna even know why they're working. They ain't gonna even want to break. They ain't even going home. They're gonna be working 24 hours until they burn a gasket, <laughs> until they burn a fuse. <laughs> you just gonna have to get more workers because you you go all your workers gonna be dying. You're gonna have to keep getting new workers. Press one. <laughs> if you want to if you want to step up the productivity of your company, put crack in a sandwich. Press one. He said, I have a friend who struggled with crack, showed up my house super late at night to sell me some stolen gift cards for NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> press one. Jake has it. Press one. <laughs> Only a crackhead can sell tickets for NASCAR. Wait, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I, I, if we made our whole military crackheads, we would never let, lose a war. We just get an army of crackheads and tell them to go up in there. There's some crack behind them. There's some crack behind them missiles. Press one. If the crackhead won't go up there and slap the missiles out the air, press one. <laughs> Straight like that. If we don't have some crackheads doing things like Superman, press one. You know, crack is the answer. We've been we've been messing around. We've been playing games. That's right. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We talking about trying to get, we talking about trying to find the super serum. The super serum is called crack cocaine. I didn't seen it. I've seen it. Man, listen. I went on and back in Midtown, you had to get a crackhead. It was so hot down there. You couldn't hold the cracks on you. So you had to get a crackhead to hold the cracks cuz the the mind state was if the crackhead go to jail, well, then it's just a crackhead. And I know it sounds raw, but that's just the way the game is. Press one. Um, so I get me this crackhead. I come out one night. I gave the crackhead the pack. Now, in the pack, it's 25 cracks. It's 28, really. 25 is yours. Three go to the crackhead. That's his pay. I know. But crackheads don't need a lot of money. That's why I'm saying. You want me? You may want to get some crackheads. They don't need a lot of money to work. Press one. So. I gave the crackhead the pack and I spun into the store to get a coffee. And when I came, turned around, the crackhead was gone. <laughs> he ran over my pack. Yo, the blocks are like three blocks long. There's no way he could have ran in any direction. I believe he flew. I believe he took my plat pack and he flew away with it. Press one. Crackheads can fly. I believe they can fly. This is the power of crack. Press one. Oh, yeah, that that super soldier around the back slap. Yeah, that was amazing. And he set it up. He said, I seen a fiend into multiple wrong houses on the street looking for the band. Up. <laughs> he said, was there any suspicious cardboard boxes? He could have became a cardboard box. I believe. For that power of crack, he became a chameleon. He probably was standing right next to me on the wall, and I couldn't even see him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the night went on. I lost two more crackheads that night. L let me tell you, people people then glorified the crack game. It ain't all what it's cracked up to be. Press one. <laughs> the crack game ain't all what it's cracked up to be. You know, I said it. I said it. They out here promoting trapping like it's fun. Nah, it ain't fun. Crackheads running off on you. Nah, it ain't fun. You don't know nothing about them streets. I used to hustle in Midtown. I seen all types of things. I used to see the Mexicans come in. See, the Mexicans, they funny. 11 of them will come in as friends. Then they'll get down, drink about 100 Coronas, and then they fighting each other. 
<laughs> busting each other in the head with empty bottle, empty Corona bottles, empty Heineken bottles. You know, the, the, the Mexicans have beat each other into submission, pick each other up, throw they arm over each other and walk home together. Press one. You ain't built like no Mexican. Press one. I said it. Black people are tough, but we ain't built like no Mexican. Press one. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing like this. Drink 100 Coronas together. Then bar fight each other. Then pick each other up bloody and take each other home. Drop Hector off, and then you're going to see him tomorrow at work. What? Mexicans is serious. Why you think America is the way we are? Ain't nobody doing the work of a Mexican. Ain't nobody putting in that work like a Mexican. Press one. We got to know our powers, people. We got to know our powers. The Mexican people are different. That's why in boxing, you can see it. In boxing, you can see a clear, a clear understanding of what, how many amateur fights you recommend before going pro. I'm 25. Oh, uh, hmm. That's a good question. Because you look at Lomachenko, he had 400 amateur fights. I don't think that was necessary, but it was a dope thing. Um, that's a good question. Because, you know, back in the days, they used to have like 80, 100 some amateur fights. But you look at Deontay Wilder, he jumped in the game with little to no amateur fights. Um, I, would, I would say that it's not just about the amateur fights, how many. It's about the ones you select. Like you should do Golden Gloves. You should do the Nationals and you should try out for the Olympics. Those to me really are the three ways as an Olymp as a, a amateur boxer that you can um test yourself. Like if you can snatch your golden gloves, then snatch your nationals, make it onto the um on, 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 onto the Olympic team, win a medal or not. Because you have a lot of fighters that win medals that become terrible professionals and then you have fighters that win no money and become excellent professionals is 22 too old to be having boxing olympic dreams hell no hell no the um the oldest boxer to enter the game was 25 i think that was rocky marciano somebody else too um and before olympic dreams 22 is not old no nowhere close you can still do it i believe in you mr izzy you can get it done. But it's good to have some amateur fights. It, see, amateur fights is the testing ground. So really, it's on you. Like if you taking a test and you always getting 100, then, you know, you, 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 you graduated. You know, so... You should take as many uh, um, fights as you need that make you feel good. Press one. You know, that make you feel good. Press one. If you feel it inside, you can have 10 fights, but feel like you ready to beat the world and go and beat the world. Press one. You know, the amateur should be a feel out thing, like because they can tell you you need 50 fights. But after 50 fights, you don't still feel ready or they can tell you you need 50 fights. And within five fights, you feel like you're ready. Press one. Then you ready. We seen the movie The Matrix when Neil walked in and he was talking to the Oracle and he was like, am I the one? And she was like, I, don't, I guess not. See, because if you question it, are you the one? Then you ain't the one. You the one when you say you the one. Right. Press one. We hear the work. We hear the work. That's right. That's right. I'm back on my live game. I got my live feet under me. Tell you, I'm going to have peoples up in here, you know, Super chats are going to be going down. We're going to be cracking. I'm the one plus zero equal one. Mm. You know, we're going to be cracking up here. We're going to be breaking down. 
different fights. You know, but uh, I believe um, Tyson Fury has a high chance of winning. Um, we're going to see what Deontay can do. But I know one thing. If they give Deontay a, a simpler game plan, he can execute it. He should be throwing that right hand to the body all night long. Throw the right hand to the body. Let me tell you something. You know what my Spanish boxing teacher told me? You punch me in my head, you make me mad. You punch me in my stomach. You make me scared. What are your three favorite types of boxing workouts to increase skill? Oh, to increase skill, double in bag, jumping rope in the mirror. And I'll break down all of them. From the, from the, from the rope, you're going to get stamina. From the double in bag, you're going to get punch, pop, and accuracy. From the mirror, you get to see what your opponent sees. Boom. Oh, boom. <laughs> I pointed the wrong way. <laughs> so, you want to become a world beater? I'm going to tell you what Wilson Pitts told me. You need a jump rope, a double in bag, and a mirror. It was Tommy Lauren that said, you need a mirror because you must see what your opponent sees. Because you got to remember, we all living in first person, not third person. We living in first person. If there was no reflection and no mirrors, you wouldn't know what you look like. You would have to take the word of somebody else. So that's why you need a mirror, because the mirror is going to show you what he sees. Then you can correct it. So there you go. Jump rope, double in bag, mirror. You can go out there, kick most people's butts. And some sparring and some and some sparring, you know, I left that out. But, you know, that's the always the hidden element. Got to spar. Got to spar. He said, that's my game for the past 20 years, man. Sam Simon, what it do, what it does. No problem, Denmark. No problem. No problem. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. you know, we're going to let this live burn out with this joint because I'm losing people. It's all good. I had a good crowd. I ain't even mad at y'all. We still rocking, though, till the joint go. That's why it's called Spliff Talk. We rock till the joint goes. I'm in rod. Yeah, I definitely... My nigga said, Tech last said, pass that. Pass the joint. I'm passing this to my homie Tech. Get that. Hit that, Tech. That's that Christmas tree. Um, Are there any Pacific on footwork, pivots, rolls, and slip? Yes, for sure. I also have an online course. $25 a month, people. Come on, man. $25 a month. For a cup of coffee a day, you can help like Burley stay relevant. $25 a month. I teach all of that. Slips, everything. As you see, I'm putting up reaction videos. I've retired from the world of putting up 52 block videos unless it's something important to say. Because I've done the park. I've done park videos for 10 years. It's over. I'm putting up my reaction video. I'm starting the podcast, be interviewing. And all of my uh, information is going to my online courses. Advance dot advance dash. Hold on. No, it's advanced.lightburly.com. Then you have learn hyphen dash martial arts, all one word, dot com. I'm teaching everything. On that course, I'm certifying you to be a 52 block instructor. Open up your own school. That's what we're doing here. But on YouTube, I've given information away for the last 15 years for free. Press one. Anybody who know me know that. Press one. I'm not I'm not the type of person trying to charge you for every lesson. Everybody know that. Press one. I give it away for free. But we all got to eat, right? We got bills. Sigma Black said, you're the reason I started taking the block seriously. Thank you. 
because there's a lot of frauds out there sigma black press one it's a lot of frauds out there in the game press one just dancing but they ain't teaching no technique of science press one they ain't got a full system press one huh where we at where we at should i start ruffling up my feathers should i start talking my talk should i blow my own horn <laughs> huh Thank you, Roscoe92. Yeah, we got work here. We got work here. We, yo, I, I got videos, at least over 2,000 videos up. Sparring. You know, I'd have been to Denmark. I'd have been to Canada. I'd have been to different states. Mayweather's gym. Press one. <laughs> Sam Simon said, you sure me and Red Man ain't brothers? Listen, I've been hearing that for years, man. I think me and Red Man somewhere... Somewhere down the line, we may be connected. Farrell, so I'll blow your horn for you. Thank you. If they said the horn sounds better when other when someone else hits you with the burr, 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 burr. it sounds better when someone else does it. Press one. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. We gotta give our we gotta give our flowers out while while we still here. So what you think about the street fights crew? Oh man. With the street fights uh, all together, I like the street fights. In my opinion, who used to took advantage of the 50 style, 52 style, the best in pro boxing slash MMA? First in MMA, we got to go to Yo Romero. Yo Romero, for sure, definitely, you've seen it. When it comes down to boxing, that's a deep one, but we can go into um, Archie Moore. Um, we can go into uh, 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 Benny Briscoe. We can do Benny Briscoe. <laughs> you know, we got some people in the game that was fifty. Uh, that was fifty-two block fighters because the art of fifty-two blocks is defense, y'all. The shapes and, and the feints that you see are feints. Feints are very big in the game. There's no sport that doesn't have feints. Football has the quarterback feint. Uh, basketball has a pump feint. I don't know what you call the feint in hockey. Anybody knows what you call the feint in hockey? I don't know what the feint in hockey is called. But there is a feint in hockey. There's a feint in soccer. So everything has feints. Fighting no different. So besides being the art of blocks, Fifty-two is the art of feints. Zab Judah too, for sure. He's from Brooklyn. Lord Jamo, now stay. Nah, oh, I'm humble. For, I'm, I'm still humble. I'm still humble. You know, this ain't this ain't no. Uh, this is this is not a braggadocious thing in no way. I support all the brothers that do their thing and are in the way or on their path. But that's why I said I'm bowing out the game because, you know, there's been a lot of attacks on Light Burley. And I've been putting in a lot of work, but I feel I've put in enough work. I don't have to be that seen in the 52 block community anymore. I got other things that I want to do. Um, the reaction videos, the podcast, and I'm a teacher on the side. You know, I got some students. I got some people that I'm working with, some amateurs that I want to take the belts. So, you know, I, I love I love my 52 block community, but also it's about Light Burley, the brand, too. You know, so um, I want to work on the brand of Light Burley and let the other brothers that's doing 52 have their time, you know, to shine, put out their thing, put out why they do it their way. You know, I've expressed why I do it my way. Now they can put out why they do it their way. That's why you don't see me. I'm not putting up too many videos on 52, you know. Big Caesar up in here. Caesar up in here. Family's up in here. My fam up in here. Yeah, movie. I would love to do a choreographed fight scene. I would love to work on some movies, a video game. You know, I would love to do, you know, do a, a character for a fight game or defense on 52. You know, 
I want to upgrade. I've done enough of everything else. I've promoted 52. I put my life on the line for 52. I put my money in the 52. I did enough. When I my whole job, my whole uh 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 um what I wanted to do with 52 was to make sure it didn't die. And I think I've done that. 52 is all over the world. Everybody knows about 52 now. So job done. So we're going to let the other brothers put out the videos. I told my students put out videos on 52. Don't let the energy die. You know, and all my people's here. Please support all of the people on the 52 block network. When you type in 52 blocks on your search channel on YouTube and then hit, you know, uh, uh, this week or, you know, this day and you see somebody put up a 52 block video, smash that like button. Yeah, I'm fighting them haters. Mr. Levy Cook, how much to teach me one on one? Well, I got the online course, which is twenty five dollars a month. But if you want personal lessons, you know, they they write, you know, they write, you know, because I'm I'm gonna get you there. I'm gonna get you there. It's a hundred dollars a lesson. It's an hour a lesson. I can get you there. I can get you there for sure. Yes, you do. UK up in here. Yo, UK was my biggest supporter when I first started. I love the UK. Oh, chopping wood is very good for strength. Come on, lumberjacking. That's old school strength building right there. That's old school. That's before we had all of these new fancy gadgets and machines. Yes, lumberjacking, chopping wood, very good for building strength in the arms. Just like flipping the tire. You see people flipping them big tires. Almost same thing. Get that work. Yeah, get at me, Labri Cook. Get at me. The block number is 347-816-5357. That is my block number. 347-816-5357. Hit me up. Hit me up. Let me know what you talk about. We put some classes together. Like I said, I got the online course. You know what I'm saying? I'm like Pa May now. I'm I'm in recluse. I'm in recluse like Pa May. You know, you don't have to search me out. You want these lessons. I was available for like 15 years. You could have came come to the park, but now you gotta search me out. So that way it lets me know you serious about this information because i got some information that's a fact say the number again 347 816 5357 one more time that's 347 816 5357 sam sign how can they hate on you when you show and prove i don't know I, I, you know, I was thinking that myself. That's confusing to me, but the game is different now, you know, and I ain't here to alter the game. I'm a, I'm a player in the game. You know, that's what we all got to understand. You know, you can't fix the game, but you can fix how you play the game. You know what I'm saying? You can fix how you play the game and I'm gonna play the game from a different hand. Which is, which is, I'm light, burly, and recluse now. I'm like, Pa May, you're going to have to climb some steps, go through a valley, fetch a bucket of water, talk to the old wise man in the village. He's going to point you into the desert. And just before you get, just before you get so dehydrated, light, burly is going to appear with some water and, I, and we're going to get that lesson on. <laughs> It'd be dope if it was like that, right? press one it'd be dope if it was like that press one i'm just saying that's my fantasy we all got a fantasy he said you playing chess with check checker players uh-huh sam sign press one you playing chess with checker players press one we playing the win man that's right dogs the prescription peace to the gods we playing the win that's right it was in the 40th Laws of the Power. I think it was Peter the Great. When they doubted his power, 
he left the throne the throne fell apart guess what they had to do they had to go search him out and say peter please come back press one you know what i'm saying press one when they got to say light burly please come back press one sometimes you got to give them what they want who was that say peter i think that was i believe so 48 laws of power i learned a lot of uh history in that book he said bruce leroy still looking for you <laughs> facts press one he can't find me i'm in recluse like palm now they can't find me i do reaction videos now you know what i'm saying i'm trying to get my channel up to a million subs press one reaction videos and i'm giving the science i did it who my five top five pound for pound no question let's let, let's go through it my top five pound for pound and i'm gonna put them in order you know a lot of people be saying they pound for pound and they don't even be having them in order i'm about to put mine in order all right we got to start from the top um canelo got canelo earl spence jr terence bud crawford lomachenko and on my fifth that just jumped on my fifth list because the work he just did javante tank davis press one should i do i gotta say it again canelo Errol, Terrence Crawford, Loma, Tank Davis. Press one. Tell me if I ain't got an ill five list. Tell me if my five list ain't on point. Who want to argue anybody on my list? Who want to do it? Who want that smoke? Press one. Who want that smoke? Who want to argue against my five list? Let, let's do it. I'm with it. I, I said it. Canelo, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, Loma Chinka. I said Chinka. Lomachenko, Tank Davis. Oh, why I ain't got Pac-Man up there? Okay, because Pac-Man is in recess to me. I know he's still active. I know he's still active. I know he's still active, but I already got him out the game. You know, I got him out the game. I know he's still active, but you Pac-Man is a cheat. Pac-Man is a cheat because we're talking about the greatest fighter ever. We talking about the greatest fighter ever in pac-man nobody has ever done what pac-man done now we know he ain't undefeated like uh mayweather that's a different thing pac-man is pac-man is he he's everything like pac-man like he's a cheat <laughs> i don't believe you can use pac-man anymore because he's too big like pac-man is the list like you know what i'm saying <laughs> pac-man is the list he's like no one's ever going to do what pac-man did no ever 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 so that's why i ain't put pac-man on my list i'm talking i'm trying to use like the newer fighters that's rocking right now and fighting on the regular you know pac-man this is going to be his last fight people after earl spence he's not fighting no more you can bet he's going to be a politician as he should be as he should be allowed to be and hang it up because he done he done greatness what he's done is just not going what he's did it's just not going to be done again what was it eight nine weight classes come on man come on man i think the last person that tried to do that was poncho villa i think he was a filipino too like i don't know what's up with those dudes but uh yeah they're they're ridiculous tiafimo he's not he can't make the list yet he ain't he's still in the oven cooking but i'm watching him i'm watching him he's like he's like a bread that i'm watching i'm watching him he could get there though he could get there triple g Ah, uh, Triple G is washed. He's definitely not on the pound for pound list no more. I I love hockey. I need to start watching. You know, when when I was in uh military school, I went to a military boarding school in Gerard College. I was very good at hockey. I liked being the goaltender because I couldn't play basketball. That's right. I said it. I was the one black man that couldn't put the ball in the hoop. I couldn't do it. I was throwing up bricks every time I tried to shoot a J. My J ended up somewhere in the bleachers hitting somebody in the head that wasn't even on the floor. <laughs> so everybody figured that uh, 
Light couldn't play basketball. I couldn't play ball at all. Yeah, he gonna rise like bread though. He gonna rise like bread though. You said B Hop. What are you talking about? Chris Colbert, little B Hop. Which B Hop you talking about? Because like I said, B Hop, the old B Hop, he's out the game. He's too old to be used right now. If you talk about Chris Colbert, little B Hop, he he he, he rising too. We got to watch Chris Colbert. Oh Bernard, yeah Bernard can't be on the pound for pound list because he ain't active, but he would be in his time. In his time, he was on the pound for pound list. Yeah, I was in. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Salute, salute. Well, the join is gone. We got an hour and twenty minutes on the live. I want to salute everybody for being part of my live. I'm back, y'all. We're going to have the reaction videos. We're going to have the lives. And what we all going to pray for is that Light Burley gets the chance to choreograph a movie, end up on the PlayStation, even Oculus. I'm looking at Oculus. I like Oculus. You know what I'm saying? I want to be on Oculus. I can I can see a 52-block version for the Oculus, the joint you put on your eyes. You know what I'm saying? We all got to pray. See, if we all pray together, the heavens got to hear us. You know what I'm saying? So if we all pray as a village, the heaven got to hear us. So let's all put that in there in y'all prayers. Thank you for supporting me. And like I said, reaction videos and lives. That was that's what we doing right now. So I'll be back. It's your boy. Ah. <laughs>